So uh, Carson and uh, Max, are those two guys who are like competing for that closing role right now? No, you know we do. We got enough guys. You know now that Hagman's not back there. We got about three or four options back there, so it turns into a matchup situation. Uh, Carson was throwing great, uh, but with the lefty up there uh, to finish the game, uh, he's not as good against lefties. And Max is throwing as good as he has all year. So both Max and Carson are coming in throwing 95 miles an hour. So really encouraging to know that in big moments you get their best stuff. So those guys will probably be in that role the rest of the season. Thoughts on Derek's performance today? Wasn't as sharp as normal, I didn't think, but one thing you can count on that dude is he's gonna compete on every pitch of the whole game. You know, it, it's okay to give up runs with him on the mound because you know he's done everything right to prepare himself for that position that he's in. So, and the guys know that. We always play good defense behind him. Uh, the games usually go pretty quick because he's a strike thrower, but uh, just, it's always just fun to watch, you know? And the plays he makes on on defense are just, he, he can change the game with how he feels his position there. Kind of feels like we ask you this every time Derek pitches, but his ability to go long, what does that do to the confidence of this team knowing, I, I guess just if you get one run on the board, it feels like it's gonna be enough? Yeah, you know, I think they know that if we have to use guys in relief on Friday, uh, they know for the most part, they're gonna get a day's rest before we're gonna need them again. And that allows them to prepare a little bit differently. If you know Derek can give you a hundred plus pitches, you know, you don't have to, I don't think we've thrown anybody in back-to-back -back games yet this year. And a lot of that is because of what Derek does. And that's why Max and Carson are throwing as good as they have all year right now is because Derek has done what Derek's done and they haven't had to pitch too much out of the pen. As far as Derek goes, when he's kind of getting up there in that pitch range of 120, 125, do you have a limit of where he can't go past or is it kind of a feel thing based on a start? It's a feel thing. You know, it's not easy to do that every time out. And he does it every time out. But he came off the field in the seventh and as he was running off the field, he looked at me and said, I got one more in me, I got one more in me. So when a guy like that says that, I trust his opinion. And uh, he did, he just, he throws his heart out there and gives you all he's got. Coach, a year ago, Kyle West is playing Division II baseball. A year later, he's now leading your team in home runs. That statement surprise you at all? Or? Had, we, had you asked me that in the fall, yeah. I'd say yes, but he has, He's come so far, and that's what, that's the, the difference in Division Two to Division One. You don't just jump in and have success. You gotta, you gotta learn how to have success, and all credit goes to him because not only is he a better hitter, he's a better runner and a better thrower, and a better eater and a better sleeper, and he has uh, dived into our resources and our culture, and that's why he's doing what he's doing because he's using everything that we offer these kids. Uh, to the nth degree, and, and that's why he's getting better all the way around. Obviously, he's an in-state kid, so does that play a role in the fact that, you know, he catches your eye, or was there something else? I mean, I don't know how many D2 guys you, you look at. I mean, all of them. Okay, all right. But that's he, a lot. I mean, he had 22 or 23 right. homers, so everybody around the country that gets on a computer and types in transfer portal knew that Kyle West was available, but uh, my coaches did their thing and recruited him. And since he's an in-state kid, that's uh, he takes a ton of pride in yeah. being here. And, and every time he plays, he's got 20 or 30 people in the stands. And our our fans usually gravitate toward West Virginia kids, and it's it's kind of fun to see what he's doing for them and what they're doing for him. It's just a, it seems like it's a match made in heaven. A little bit of that because you saw him in person. Yeah, he uh, played game, against yeah, us yeah. a couple years ago and. Uh, we're not going to make a decision off that game, but but uh, he had a good summer in the Northwoods League and hit some homers, and and uh, we knew it was going to take a little while, but the transformation he's made is just incredible. So, Susan, if you're looking at all D2 kids, and obviously there's you know, eight, nine hundred thousand D1 kids in the portal, that's a lot of guys you look at over the course of one off season. Oh yeah, that's what the portal is. Yeah. It's just 
it's so loaded with people. You just gotta, if you take a day off from the portal, you, you miss kids. So uh, the assistant coaches are up there every day uh, just tracking kids that number one are in the portal, number two looks like they might get in the portal. And, and so as soon as they do, you gotta jump on them quick because everybody out there is doing what we're doing with these portal kids. So you're automatically recruiting against a ton of schools. I know. And had you looked at him at all coming out of high school, out of Hedgesville? Yeah, I'm sure. the uh, Coach Sabins, I think, uh, knew who Cal was, but he needed that uh, right. couple years of transition to uh, to do what he did. And he saw, he, he bridged that gap and saw that D2 pitching, and now he's seeing D1 pitching. Yeah. If a kid like that comes straight here out of high school and gets overmatched for a year or two, you lose confidence, and he might get in the portal from here right. instead of get in the portal to come here. So, uh, yeah, it's just uh, that portal changes things, man. You don't win the portal, you don't win the games. I've said that a hundred times. I'm curious. You talk about you know guys or on the coaches, I should say, tracking the portal almost every day. When you first came here, what was the thing that you guys were tracking almost every day that wasn't the portal? Was there something outside of the program that you guys were tracking? Yeah, you know, we had to hang our hats on how we develop kids. Uh, we weren't winning recruiting battles against hardly anyone back then. Uh, so, you know, those early guys, the, the Darius Hills and uh, Pudge and Manoa and those guys, you know, Manoa was here in 2019, but we recruited him in 2014 and 2015, not long after we got here. So at that time, you're just hanging your hat on trying to develop young kids into good players. And once we did that, and establish the, the culture that we have in our program. Then you start winning games, and now all of a sudden you have, uh, you're getting better kids to add to that culture. But you know, this, this is alumni weekend, and we've got a bunch of kids back that were on that first team of ours, 2013 or whatever it was when I got here. That, that team there really set the tone for what we're doing now. What, what that team was made of now, listen to this now. In 2013, our first year in the Big 12, Harrison Musgrave was on that team. He threw five straight complete game shutouts on Friday night in the Big 12. He single-handedly changed the standings for us to finish third in our first year. We had the top three hitters in the Big 12 in year one. Billy Fleming, Bobby Boyd, Ryan McBroom finished one, two, and three in the Big 12. If not for that, this transformation probably would have taken a lot longer than it actually did but to have that success with those kids that we didn't recruit they were they were in place those guys were mountaineers when i got here uh, and to see these kids back now uh, those those guys and the alums over here today the 94 team that uh, won the won the last championship and those guys set the tone for where we are now it's just it's nice to make them proud of what we're doing now. I just, I've always tried to reach out to them and let them know how much I appreciate uh, what they've done for this program, because without them, we're not where we are. Were you sweating out that last video review or are you pretty confident that- I was, I'm rarely confident, but I've, I've said in the past that has turned into the most exciting play in baseball, waiting for the umpires <laughs> to come out of the video room. Uh, so you never know, but I wasn't too happy the amount of time they spent in there. It looked pretty cut and dried to me that JJ caught the ball, but when they're in there for so long, I think they're looking for reasons to overturn something. So, But I was pretty confident. I actually gave my microphone away to uh, our director of ops before they came out of there because I, I saw the play pretty clearly. Good.